20,000 years ago, much of North America was covered with ice. For a million years, great sheets of ice had ebbed and flowed across the land. Since then, the Earth's climatic conditions have changed. and These vast glaciers have long since disappeared. In some areas, the climate still remains cold throughout most of the year and large quantities of snow accumulate. One such area is the Canadian Arctic. Here, glaciers still exist. Let's see how they are formed. Seen through a microscope, fresh snow crystals look like this. Within a short time, days or even hours, this form is lost. The crystals gradually become more granular and fit together more closely. This is known as fern or corn snow. As additional snow falls, its weight causes the granules to pack. Over the years, under increasing pressure from the accumulating snow, they merge into clusters. The clusters become chunks. And finally, a solid mass of ice is formed. By now, due to its own great weight, tremendous pressures are present within the ice. The ice is under stress. When ice is subjected to stress, it no longer behaves as a rigid solid, but begins to flow. A flowing mass of ice is called a glacier. Usually we can't see a glacier move, but we can see evidence of movement and of the enormous force with which it moves. Rocks that fall on its surface may over the years be carried many miles. At the edge of the glacier, fallen rock collects to form moraines, great heaps of rock that travel with the glacier. The center of a glacier moves somewhat faster than its edges. This difference in pace produces flow lines in the ice. As it moves slowly forward, the surface of the glacier is partly shaped by the land beneath it. If the terrain steepens suddenly, the ice stretches and cracks. Huge crevasses are formed. the land levels off suddenly, the ice may buckle and form pressure waves. At the snout, where the altitude is lower, the glacier is subject to warmer temperatures and the ice melts away. Loose debris scraped from the land beneath the glacier and embedded in the ice is deposited to form a large mound or terminal moraine. To understand how weather affects the life of a glacier, let us look at it in side view. If the snow falling at the higher end of a glacier equals the amount of melt at the lower end, its snout will remain stationary. If the amount of accumulating snow is greater than the melt, the glacier will increase in size and its snout will advance.
If accumulation is less than the melt rate, the glacier will decrease in size and its snout will retreat. But regardless of the balance between accumulation and melting, the glacier ice is always in motion. The melt water collects on the surface of the glacier and forms streams, rivers, and even lakes. This water flows down the glacier and plays a part in shaping the land. Some streams tunnel their way down through the ice to the valley floor. At the snout, the violence of the onrushing water cuts through the moraine deposits. The streams which have carved their way beneath the glacier to the valley floor emerge at the snout carrying mud and debris with them. This debris that is washed away is deposited some distance from the snout to form an outwash plain. The ability of glaciers to move materials in large quantities has played a part in shaping the face of North America. During the Ice Age, vast areas were swept clean down to bare rock. The rocky debris that was removed was spread over great distances. The action of the ice and the water it produced as it melted away brought many new features to the landscape. This strange formation is an esker, the accumulated debris of an ancient subglacial stream. Grooves were rasped into solid bedrock by boulders trapped and carried beneath the moving ice. The boulders, or erratics, were carried for miles before the ice finally melted away. This country is typical of a post-glacial area. Its soil is stony, its hills have been smoothed down, and its valleys filled and leveled by glacial deposits. The work the great ice sheets did more than 10,000 years ago still influences our lives. The loose material they spread over the land is now the subsoil of rich farming country. The vast glaciers of the Ice Age have determined to a great extent the pattern of man's settlement in North America. 
Ice is now a substance which we are aware of only in winter. But a slight change in the Earth's climate could once more bring into being those vast sheets of ice that can change the face of a continent. <laughs>